Sunday. For NFL fans, Sundays are special. The day of the week dedicated to watching their heroes. For the players on the field, Sundays are a dream come true. I, I first of all pinch myself every day. I get to come to work, I get to watch football all day, I get to go out and play football. And play it at the highest level for the New York Giants. For linebacker Mark Kurtzlick, it's a life he didn't expect. As a kid, it was just a complete fantasy. You know, you looked at the guys playing football and they didn't even look like humans, they looked unreal. But as young Mark grew, he slowly began his unreal journey to the greatest stage on earth. He was a high school star in Pennsylvania and went to Boston College on a full scholarship. But this is where the story changes because Mark's incredible tale is more than just how he made it to the NFL. It's how he probably shouldn't have made it this far in football and in life. You went on to play at Boston College. You were an amazing talent on the field and then something happened in 2009 that changed mm -hmm. your life. After the bowl game, I got some pain in my leg. Pain persisted, pain persisted. Got an MRI on my leg eventually, and the doctor said it was cancer. Mark was told he had Ewing sarcoma, a rare form of bone cancer with few treatment options. Options that pretty much started and ended with removing the cancerous portion of Mark's femur and replacing it with a donated bone or a titanium rod. Worst of all, both options meant Mark's NFL dreams were over. I went and sat in my room by myself that day after the diagnosis and I said, no way. And that moment I decided, I said, no matter what the doctors say, I'm gonna go with what I think. I can prove them wrong. Rather than go with the recommended treatment, Mark decided to go with the riskiest option of all, straight chemotherapy and radiation treatment hoping success would mean he could still play football. I wanted to take that risk. I didn't want to have to be walking around on crutches for the rest of my life. And there were people along the way, there were doctors at all different hospitals that said, you're nuts. You know, I said, okay, either it beats me or I beat it. And for Mark, losing was not an option. He beat it. When he was cancer free, Mark started every game of his senior season but the NFL suddenly didn't seem to be an option either. He went undrafted in the 2011 NFL Draft, but that did nothing but propel Mark to work harder. Because after you win a battle like he did, nothing is impossible, especially in the sport you love. And the New York Giants took notice and signed him. What I've learned in the past three years is that it's not as much how you get here it's about what you do when you get here. Today, Mark will never forget the hurdles he had to overcome to get here and hopes his story will strengthen others. Early on in my sickness, a teammate of mine at Boston College created a chapter of uplifting athletes at Boston College. They raised $30,000 in 28 days and it was the most selfless act hmm. that I had ever seen. Uplifting Athletes is just one of the many charities Mark makes time for. Giants coach Tom Coughlin J Fund supports families affected by childhood cancers, and Mark supports them. Just this summer, they hosted their annual ice cream social. As much as Mark has done to redefine himself since surviving cancer, there is still one event that stands out. What was it like when you walked out onto the field, the Super Bowl? And I remember walking down those stairs and being like, they told me I could never do this. And it was, uh, it was a very realistic moment that wrapped up a lot of things for me uh, in terms of my cancer diagnosis. 